Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at this awesome little gaming PC. And when I say gaming PC, I mean this is actually a real gaming PC. Most of the time when we take a look at these mini PCs, they're powered by integrated graphics be it Intel or AMD's APUs, but this one here actually contains a real NVIDIA GTX 1650. Given it is the mobile counterpart, but it'll definitely put out more power than any of the APUs on the market at the time of making this video. Along with that 1650, this mini PC is actually powered by an i7-9750H. They make a few different variants of this, from the i5 up to the i9, but I kind of went mid-range with it. And along with the PC itself, we're also going to receive a user manual. We also have our power cable, some extra screws for an M.2. We also get all the accessories we need to add a 2.5 inch mechanical or SSD drive and the power supply, which is coming in at 150 watts. These are available all over the place from Amazon to eBay, but I picked mine up on AliExpress because it was a bit cheaper. I paid $568 shipped to the door for a bare bones unit. So I will need to add my own RAM and storage, but just know if you're interested in picking one of these up, you can opt for them to add up to 32 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of storage. For this one here, I'm going with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 2666 and a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. Basically, I already had this stuff laying around, so I figured I could save a little bit of money and just add it myself. So this thing is actually pretty tiny. On the front here, we have no I.O. I kind of wish they would have added at least one USB port, but we have a power button up here. And moving around back, we have our power input, USB Type-C, full-size display port, full-size HDMI, two USB 2.0 ports, four USB 3.0 ports, gigabit Ethernet, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Not much going on around the sides here, but we do have ventilation on each. And in order to get to the internals, there's four screws on the bottom and it just kind of pops right off. As you can see, we do have a dual fan set up and for being a mobile chipset in this unit, the CPU and the GPU, this is actually a pretty beefy heatsink here. So I think we're going to be able to keep this thing nice and cool. It does come pre-installed with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Unfortunately, it's only Wi-Fi 5. I kind of wish they would have added a Wi-Fi 6 card here, but this will definitely get you by. Plus we have gigabit ethernet. And since this was the bare bones unit, we don't have any RAM or storage, but uh, we can add dual channel RAM here. I'm going to go with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 2666 and a 512 gigabyte TeamForce M.2 NVMe SSD. So I'm going to go ahead and install the RAM now. And this is a bit tight in here due to that 2.5 inch bracket. You can add a single 2.5 inch SSD or mechanical drive, but uh, we can slot this RAM right in here. And basically, the last thing I need to add to get this up and running is my M.2 SSD. It's super easy to set one of these little mini PCs up. So like I mentioned, they do offer a few different variants of this, but the one I have here is powered by the i7-9750H. We have 6 cores, 12 threads, base clock of 2.6 GHz with the turbo up to 4.5. The GPU is the GTX 1650. This is a mobile variant with 4 GB of DDR5 RAM. Plus, we have the built-in UHD 630 graphics. My setup contains 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 2666, and I've installed Windows 10 Pro on that 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. So I'm super excited to get into some testing. I really want to see how this thing performs, and I got a good feeling it's going to do a great job for its form factor. So first things first, I wanted to take a quick look at the BIOS to see what was locked and what wasn't, and basically everything's unlocked here. We can actually change the TDP directly from the BIOS, but for this video, we're going to leave this completely stocked, just like it came out of the box, and I'll worry about adjusting the TDP using Intel's tuning utility from within Windows. Alright, so here we are. I've had some time to mess around with this mini PC, and I can tell you that this is actually a really awesome little setup here. As you can see, we have that i7-9750H, and right out of the box, it's set at 45 watts, but we can change this. Moving over here to the GPU, we have that GTX 1650, 4GB of DDR5, and if you wanted to, you can move over to that UHD 630 for lighter tasks. And if you did want to do a little bit of overclocking on this GTX 1650, you could do it through Afterburner with no issues whatsoever. But I'd say the main thing to tune on this little PC is actually the TDP on the CPU. I've tested a lot of different configurations here, and stock it's at 45 watts. The first three games you're going to see running in this video are going to be at 45 watts. But from then on, I went into Intel's tuning utility, and I took this up to 65 watts. I've also turned the turbo time up to 128 seconds. 
and I noticed a big boost in gaming performance after doing this. Now, it will cause that CPU to get a bit hotter, but even from 45 watts to 65 watts, my average CPU temp was 81 degrees Celsius. And that definitely does sound a little high, but keep in mind, basically what we have here is a laptop with no screen. And given that the built-in cooler here is actually cooling the GPU and this CPU going up to 65 watts, I think that's pretty decent. Especially given the form factor of this mini PC. So the very first thing I always like to do is run some benchmarks. And first up, we have Geekbench 5 coming in with a single core score of 1098, multi 4988. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks using 3 d Mark. First up, we have Night Raid with a 27,567, Fire Strike, 8,407, and finally, Time Spy with a 3,712. So yeah, not bad at all across the board here, but we really picked this up for gaming, so let's see what it can do. I have 10 games to test here, and keep in mind the first three are running at 45 watts. So first on the list, we have Genshin Impact 1080p high settings, and it's running really well here. We're at 60. Now, I did notice a couple drops down to 58 when there was a lot of particles on screen. At the very back end of the i7-9758, you can see we're at that 45 watt TDP. Moving over to Forza Horizon 4, 1080p, high settings. I actually didn't expect it to run it this well. Um, I know we're only at high. You could probably go up to Epic with this and lock it at 60 and run it like that all day. But I think high still looks really great. And we got an average of 83 FPS out of this one. Moving over to Street Fighter 5, 1080p, high settings. You're not going to have any problem running this one. So now with the rest of the games you're going to see running in this video, I've taken the TDP on that CPU up to 65 watts. Here's Fortnite, 1080p, high settings. We got an average of 89 FPS. Totally playable like this. It's looking pretty good. Overwatch, 1080p, high settings, we averaged 96 FPS, and going into this, I knew that we were going to have really good performance with it. This is just a very well-optimized game. Here we have Doom Eternal, 1080p, high settings, with no resolution scale going, so we're at 100%. We got an average of 82 FPS. I also wanted to test out Dirt 5. Now with this one here, I did have to take some of the settings down to medium, so we have a high medium mix, but we're still at 1080p with 100% resolution scale, and it averaged 63 FPS. Here's GTA 5 1080p with a high normal mix, I had to take some of these down, but we averaged 81 FPS out of this really good performance given that this is such a small form factor PC. Here's Call of Duty Warzone, 1080p normal settings, and I thought I would have to turn dynamic resolution on to get this to run well, but we actually averaged 83 FPS out of this one. You will see it dip down to around the 70s every once in a while, but overall it is playable on this little machine. Just 
And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077. 1080p, low settings with 70% resolution scale. We averaged 54 FPS. I actually thought it would do a little better than this, but it's a really hard game to run. So overall, I'm really impressed with the performance here, and this is definitely one of the best performing mini PCs in this form factor that I've ever tested on the channel. It definitely beats out any of the Ryzen APUs or Intel integrated graphics by far. I would have loved to see lower CPU temps, but you know, I did jack this up to 65 watts. I mean, what was I expecting? There's a good chance that if I remove this heat sink and apply some good thermal paste, we could take the temps down by a little bit. But overall, it just doesn't look like there's enough cooler here to keep this thing nice and cool at 65 watts, even with some really good thermal paste. Like I said, there's a chance we could get a few degrees down, but the way it's sitting right now, it's not thermal throttling and I think it's doing a pretty decent job. So I will have at least one more video coming up with this mini PC. I definitely want to test out some emulation, but if there's anything else you want to see on this, even if you just want me to replace this thermal paste and do some more testing, if you're interested in picking one of these up, I will leave a few links in the description, and you could do just like I did. You can buy one bare bones if you already have some RAM and storage laying around and save you some money. But so far, this thing's been working out really well, and if you're looking for a small form factor gaming PC, this is something that I could recommend, especially with PC part prices and GPU prices the way they are right now. But that's going to wrap it up for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.